How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Creator Video Podcast. Today, I have Shasha here with me. She's a product manager working for Carsum. And on the side, she's starting a creator business where she's trying to build something on the side. So I think her background is quite interesting for professional people who, you know, you get a proper job, but you know deep down inside, you're maybe not really that happy with your job. You want to try something else, right? <laughs> but you can't quit because your job's, you know, high paying, got a lot of good benefits and that kind of stuff. So you want to try something on the side, which is safe, which is something that you really like to do. So that's exactly what Shasha is doing. Shasha, would you like to introduce yourself beyond what I just said? Okay. All right. Hey guys, I'm a product manager. That's my day job. And on the side, I'm a car reviewer as well as I love to share contents on fitness because I do running and cycling. So I guess you guys want to know how I actually go into content creating. So Shasha, let's start with your job. Like, uh, what is it again? Product manager. I'm a product manager. Okay. So for some people who don't know what that is, can you explain what that is at Carsum? Carsum has an app and also a website app, I mean a website. What we do as a product manager, whatever that business wants or whatever that user customers want, so we will be working closely with software engineers to make it happen. If you guys are a product manager, we, we, you would know that we will be firefighting almost every day. Okay, but you're not the one coding, right? No. So what do you do? You you manage the, the coders or? Okay, so for example, like as easy as you need a WhatsApp uh, pop-up window at the side of your app or a website. So we will take that, we will see what's the priority in our roadmap, then we will share it with our software engineers and let the software engineers build it up. Can I say that you are uh, the middle person between the actual business owners who want something to happen and then the developers? Yeah. So you kind of like... Bridging it. Yeah, yeah, bridging that idea mm -hmm. into turning into reality. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So, Carsum is obviously a website trying to sell used cars. Mm -hmm. So, I guess that is probably why you decide to review cars. No, it's actually the other way around. Ah, okay. Actually, how I get Carsum is also because I had experience in cars. In Car reviews. Yeah, and all the content creation that I did before. Right. Probably that's why I would say a plus point for them to hire me. Okay, there you go. She believes that she got the job because she created content. When we say content, like what were you talking about? Your biggest, your your biggest presence, I would say, is YouTube. Yes, I would say yes. YouTube. Okay, so yeah, my I, YouTube, yeah, my YouTube counts more than Instagram. Okay, so yeah, YouTube, you got how many subs right now? I think it's close to four thousand now. Okay, pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. So this is also this is an inspiration for somebody who's new to to start something that they like. So what topics do you talk about on your channel? Okay, so mainly it's about automotive car review. Views, but also at the same time, I include things like lifestyle, going for camping, even in my car content as well. I will put that in. Okay, I think you have another Traveling. one, right? Another one. Another another topic that you like to talk about? Oh, fitness, yet? but I don't really create a video for it. Yeah, it's just right. like a, a come and go in Instagram, like story or reels or post. Okay. Mm. Okay, so uh, I helped Shasha with some consultation before. She had a lot of ideas of mm -hmm. what to talk about on her YouTube channel. But then, what what was your problem really? Like you, you couldn't pick pick a niche or because most of the things that I read or mm. maybe some gurus they would say focus on a niche, focus on a niche. But I just can't. <laughs> I, I I like I like to share about fitness. I'm doing car reviews and also at the same time I have plans to share about my product manager experience. Hmm. So. I don't think I can just fit into one box, into one niche. That's yeah. why I, yeah, that's okay. why we talk. This is actually a very common problem most creators have mm -hmm. because, you know, they hear uh, you got to pick a niche yes. and that kind of stuff. But in reality, we are humans. We have multiple desires and interests. So you, it's not possible to just talk about one thing. Correct. So if you put your niche above here and then your personal branding down there, mm -hmm. then eventually you run out of ideas or you want to talk about something else. Then people follow you because of this, but not necessarily because they like you, mm -hmm. right? Then you might have a problem when you, want to decide to talk about something else. So what I taught Shasha to do and also some of my students is that instead of putting your, your niche above, you put your personal brand actually mm -hmm. above. So you make people actually like you for who you are and then you just happen to be talking about three things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that's the biggest take that you got from that meeting, I Correct. guess, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so you put your personal brand up there. Now you have three topics that you talk about, which mm -hmm. is your content pillar. Correct. So what is your three content pillars? So first is car reviews. Okay, so first is automotive car reviews mm -hmm. or anything that's related to cars. Mm -hmm. Second would be fitness. But that one, I would say roughly around 20, 30 percent I'm going to it and lastly will be the product manager uh, niche yeah okay so you uh, you pick that because you want to share your to be honest product manager we have a lot of I mean a lot of people coming from different backgrounds you can be an engineer you can be coming from accounts coming from marketing business so in terms of let's say if people are
ask me how to become a product manager, it's really broad the way for you to become one. So I think, and also we don't have any formal education on becoming one. So let's say if you have you 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 take a degree in accounting, so you would know okay what's the next career path. Right. Okay. Pretty so, straightforward. So so product manager you don't have it. So I thought of um since I know Malaysia is I wouldn't say it's small but. People not knowing about it. Yeah. The awareness is not really there. So I thought of sharing my experience. Then yeah, there will be more product managers in Malaysia. Yeah. And actually, this whole product manager de- uh, developer oh, is it's a trending job in the future, right? Yeah, I would say yeah, like data yeah. analyst, yeah, data yeah. scientist. Yeah. Which brings us to the first question that I forgot to ask you. Like, what did you study in school? Okay, so I studied mechanical engineering. <gasps> Same as me. <laughs> But okay, so th- my career path is a bit weird because from okay, I just work. I work as design engineer for 11 months, and I I, I get bored of it. <laughs> It's like AutoCAD or just AutoCAD. So oops, just the AutoCAD for 11 months, and then I quit. And then what were you designing? Some small small medical supplies, medical gadgets. Malaysia uh-huh. company lah. Uh, I would say it's a consultant company. Oh. Yeah. Then I got the chance to go into e-commerce. Actually, when I I was in co- in in the e-commerce industry, that's where I learned about sourcing, manufacturing, uh, digital marketing, PR, e- event. E- e-commerce is selling what? I was managing a brand, a cosmetic brand, local cosmetic brand. Because you remember at that time there were a point where a lot of people doing their own local cosmetic brand. So we Bancho were one of them. Sendiri. Yeah, Bancho. no, but just diri lah, proper. Okay, we even we even hired a, a, a manufacturer in Korea. Worked there for three years. So oh. you doing what at that? Okay. One man show. So But I. But they did. hired you as what? <laughs> It's like I would say I w- I would call myself like head of brand because it was a one man show and I only have a graphic designer. So I do the planning, strategizing. Where, where I did you source- get this job? Huh? Where did you get this job? <laughs> so weird. Connection network. Ah, so okay. yeah, for three years then. With that experience, then I would say I I wouldn't say this like a informal job, but I just feel that it's not really a formal experience, like a proper proper company. It's okay. like a because it's like a one man show. I do everything, so I just manage a brand, and then after that, with this experience that I had, I joined an M N uh, an M N C company. No, yeah, M N C company, um, which is IKEA. Oh. Okay. Uh, Doing what? E-commerce specialist. Uh, so I was working on a Philippines project. So they want to launch a store and an e-commerce store in Philippines. However, COVID happened, so it got extended. So I was holding a process and operation position. Two years project, um, contract end. And then I got a job in Coca Cola for a while. Okay, really, really <laughs> big names here. Coca Cola, but just for a few months. I was managing the launch for Drop Malaysia. They have like a B 2 B app. For their agents, their stores, their yeah supermarket. Then only now I'm in custom. So the path I would say it's a bit here and there. However, the experience that I get, it's giving me to where I am today as a product manager and also as a content creator. Interesting. That's very interesting. Very interesting. You got like really big big brands in your resume. So uh, yeah, pretty 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 cool. You pick three topics that you want to talk mm-hmm, about: mm-hmm. cars, fitness, fitness, and, and product manager. And then product manager. Uh-huh. Okay, so. If you want to be a content creator, you mm. can pick around three topics, broad topics that you want to talk about because you're human, you have multiple interests and mm-hmm. sometimes people like you because of one topic and maybe not the other. Mm. So if you only focus on one thing, then you kind of like... You just cover one market. Yeah, yeah. I'll cover one market. So in your case, can you share like, uh, why did you pick these three just roughly? Okay, the reason why, I, okay, the first one will be the automotive reason why is because I love cars and I see there's a lacking in experience sharing as a lady, as a as a woman on uh, reviewing cars yeah. because guys and girls, we have different perspective. Mm-hmm. So yes, lacking of that. So that's why I thought, okay, why not I try this out? And then in terms of fitness, it's been my lifestyle ever since high school. So I've been running and cycling. So from whatever that I have experience, why not? I share, even though I don't have any certificate, but I think I've done a lot of experiments. So yeah, and then the third one, product manager. I see in terms of our local market, there's not much of people sharing about it. UI UX, there's a lot, but in terms of product manager, I don't see it. Even um going for events, also we are still lacking of product manager events. And could it be that you kind of want to use that as like your online CV to maybe get a better job? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, I thought of that. Leveraging on that. All right. So who who are you like kind of targeting? In terms of the product management manager job. I mean, where do you go above product manager anyway? Okay, in terms of career path, will be product manager, senior PM, head of product. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So you any particular? So companies? my 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 target market will be like aspiring product managers. Mm-mm. No, I mean like uh, what company do you want to oh, go into? Oh, next. Like, yeah. Or the next. Like or, or or just like aspire to work with. 
Spotify. <laughs> okay, Spotify, right there. If you're watching this uh, video podcast, you got a product manager here. And you never know, because uh, maybe they're watching. You know. Okay, yeah. that's really cool. So now, um, ultimately, you're building this on the side. Mm. And what's your goal, really, by creating this content? And why did you choose YouTube out of all the other platforms that you choose? What's your goal? Let's start with that. Mm, okay, well, the reason why I choose YouTube is because I don't think I can cram everything in in what sixty seconds video mm, or mm. a post like long caption. So YouTube, I would say we can blabber much. Okay, not blabber, but you can talk a lot of things in a video. It can be like more in depth, minutes. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah all right. It's more in depth. So why did you choose, let's say, YouTube over, let's say, writing? Actually, I tried both. Uh, writing sometimes just it just I I think it it's com it, it's more complicated whereby you need to have a blog you have you need to have a website I do have a website but it's just I would say almost dead. Mm. <laughs> you have to the design of that it's I think it's much more complicated than have than doing a video. Yeah. Huh, interesting. A lot, some people think it's the other way around. Mm. Feel like writing is so much easier maintaining it rather than the video. Creating videos. Uh, yeah. So that depends on your personality, which mm. one you like. Okay, so that is why you pick those. But ultimately, when you do this content, what mm. are you trying to achieve? Yeah, that's a hard question. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people don't ask this question to themselves, like why are they creating content? They just see that, oh, everybody's doing content. Therefore, I need to do content too. But they never ask like, why am I doing this? I don't know, I just love sharing. I just, the ultimate goal would be, okay, as a, okay, you know that I have a full-time job, but yeah. we never know because we don't have control to it. We never know what will happen in the next five or three years. Mm. So in a way, I hope that this content creation will be like a backup plan for me. Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. But if I have the opportunity to go full-time or to go all out, go big, go global or international, yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. That's pretty cool. So a lot of it is like you're, you're trying to turn your passion into some monetary thing mm. less and also a backup plan. So when you reach a point in your career where maybe something happens in your mm. formal career, mm. at least you have this as a backup plan. Mm. And you can, she can reach a point where she can maintain this as a, as a part-time gig plus part-time income thingy mm. or she could do it full-time. That's entirely up to her to pick at that point. Because some people, they don't want to leave their job. Mm. Because, you know, the job is a good career, yeah, good and benefits. At, at, at this moment, I just love my job. Yeah, <laughs> so not, ev not everybody who creates content wants to quit their job. Some people, they have a proper job and this is just a side hustle mm. uh, to get clients or whatever. Uh, get a bit extra money. All right, so how do you plan to make money out of your content? Roughly. I know you're new. You're probably not yet making yes, uh, proper money or sponsorship mm -hmm. money, which is fine. It, it often takes a bit of time for brands to recognize you and stuff mm. like that. But mm -hmm. ultimately, how do you see yourself making money through your content? I don't know if it's legit, but I've seen somewhere in, in, in other countries where people are actually becoming like a car consultant to, wow. yeah, car Who's consultant, that? like private car consultant. It's just a random website that I found. So it's like they paid you about maybe $200, then this person will find a car for you based on your criteria and your needs, and then wow. go to, and find some used car. If you want a used car, um, used car then yeah. Okay, so you, you, your, your main revenue is probably brands approaching you or you approach brand mm. they pay you to market their stuff like mm, basically mm, mm. Now, in terms of monetizing plans i don't really have yet in mind because yeah. to me this is like just a, i mean it's just a hobby yeah, like, yeah i get cars even even i exchange cars with friends yeah and they're like hey you go take my car for during the weekend i just review yeah okay cool mm. I, but you know one thing that you can make money immediately youtube you, they, you, you get money at cents right yes i do but very small number uh, yes okay that's fine uh, because i'm conversing in malay so I guess that's, oh, really? yeah, so in Malay, I believe it's much, much smaller than you conversing. Well, there, there you go. Mm, because your market is just maybe Indonesia, um, Malaysia or Brunei or Singapore. So the market is much smaller than if you speak English. But let's just focus on Malay because we are lacking on that. Yeah. yeah. So that depends on you. Depends but, on but, but that's a good point. Meaning, if you create content in Malay, you will have a very wide market here, here. In, in, in locally. Yes. But that, that could also mean a lower uh, ad revenue. Mm. So people who typically uh, speak in English, because the, it's such a wide market worldwide. Mm. Mm -mm. So you have a potential to earn more in ad revenue. This one I haven't tried yet. But what I'm planning is, I'll just speak Malay as normal. Mm -hmm. But then in the subtitle, I'll make it into English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you tried affiliate marketing? Like just recommending random, like whatever in your videos, like, hey, this is a notebook I like. Uh, if you like this, uh, link below. Whatever, just whatever mm. stuff that you see on your video that you use, you can just put in the link down there. Mm, not yet. I just, okay, affiliate marketing, I just do Evolve, Evolve, Evolve Co Asia, and Shopee. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. In terms of... Oh, so you do, have, you do have it with them? Uh, yeah, I do it. Okay. So what, 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 what do you... What do you 
promote my gadgets whatever that ah. i use for my uh, video recording and then um books because involve code i think it's book depository i think ah, yeah right right right, uh, right those kind of things but it's just more like a okay when it comes to gadget yes i post it on my youtube description but in terms of like everyday use of items i just use it uh, post it on my website and then link it to my ig story Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so knowing what you are right now, like mm. where do you see yourself, let's say five years from now or 10 years from now? If you can <laughs> choose, like would you be doing content creation full time or you keep your job still or what's your plan? Okay, in five years to come or maybe you keep 10 years to come. 10 years to come, probably I'm st- I will still keep my job. Right. Let's see how it goes. But in terms of content creation, I'm planning to go like globally. Yeah. Damn, so that means you got to do English. Yeah. Let's try with Malay and subtitle in English first. Very interesting. Okay. I I I have plans like going abroad. Ah. I mean, going abroad as in like go to because different market, different countries they have different kind of cars. Right. So in Malaysia, we are we are already. I wouldn't say um we are very limited. Right. However, I'm I would love to explore more things. In, let's say in the US, you know, they have like muscle cars. Got Bringing it. that to my market in Malaysia. Funny in Malaysia. because my dream is to live uh, somewhere where I don't need a car. <laughs> <laughs> I Oops. mean the car. The car is a luxury. I like cars, yeah. but I don't want to be reliant you on a car. Reliant on it, yes. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so the last question, like, let's say somebody who is aspiring to be somewhat like you, what would your advice to them be? Uh, let me let me <coughs> rephrase it this way. Let's say somebody who already has a professional job like you, and then they want to monetize their passion. I would say as a content mm. creator. So mm. it may or may not have anything to do with their job. It's mm. a, a side thing. Mm. So, what's your advice to them? Like, how do they manage the time, or how do they start even? Like, how do they not get overwhelmed? That kind of stuff. Like, oh, come on, what do you have? Every, uh, every every day. I in terms of um, how do you manage your time? It actually goes back to your priority. Uh, I would say sometimes, yeah, I can be lazy. I procrastinate a lot, especially when it comes to editing videos. But then you know that you need to do something and you need to take action on it. So consistency is the key. You just have to, you just have to be strong because just okay. I have one um, simple message. Just think of one percent every day. I always tell that to myself. At least okay. For example, like editing videos, it's a lot. Yeah. Why not you just okay? Maybe today you just put in video into the software. Right. And then cut it maybe a few things. Right. Then. That's it. You can rest. Then tomorrow maybe um, adding songs, finding songs. Yeah, that's it. One more percent. So usually take by uh, take step by step. Yeah, consistency, priority, uh, appreciate the progress. Okay. Yeah. In other words, kayo plan plan. Mm, yes, can you play? It's okay, one percent. It's okay. okay. But but you said something quite interesting when we were getting setting up with all this thing. Mm. You saw that I have all this setup, and then you said something quite interesting. What was that? Do you want to share with the audience? It was it was, it was pretty it was pretty good. <laughs> I keep giving myself excuse excuses to not take action on the things that I should. Okay, so, and then when you saw the setup and what happened? Uh, I saw the setup. Oh, yeah. I should I should not be giving myself excuses. I just have to just go before everything that I have at home. Yeah, because that's exactly what I'm doing. I just yeah. use whatever's lying around in my home. Yeah, I just have one fancy mic here that I use. But uh, you know, but because, that's it. Because because my plan is to to maybe rent a place where you know ah, mic no. is there, yeah. light is there. But looking at his setup, I'm like, okay, now Ju- I yeah. cannot. <laughs> just use whatever you have. This is a living room. I have to tell everybody to like leave me alone for like an hour. Uh, bring all my gear out to the living room. Just work with what you have, you know. Or else you have not, no content out. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So good, good. That's good advice. <laughs> A good observation. All right. So there you go, guys. Uh, this is the end of the episode. Uh, I would like to thank Shasha for coming over. So if you are a professional and you are planning to go content creation part time, this is a great episode for you. All right. So say bye to the. Bye guys. People. Bye. Let's keep going. Bye bye. <laughs>